So you want to build a radio station and you need to know how the transmitter works and how to set it up for the best signal, then check this out. To set up an FM radio transmitter, there are a few important things to keep in mind. Most of them have to do with the quality of the transmitter. If you're using a cheap FM transmitter, chances are you'll be having major problems, which uh, can cause you to lose your broadcast license or get caught if you are broadcasting without one. I in no way encourage any unlicensed broadcasting, just so we are clear. What you decide to do is your own choice and you accept the risks and consequences for your choices and your actions. Okay, the three main issues are power or watts of FM signal, signal modulation, which is the volume of the audio and the signal quality, which is signal deviation or drift and spurious signals. Let's start with the wattage. Most low power transmitters that can be used in some countries without a license are often 100 milliwatts or below. At this level, even if your transmitter is junk, you probably won't cause as many problems as with high power. The moment you go over one watt of power, the chances of interference with other signals becomes very real. When you go above 100 milliwatts, you really need to pay attention to the signal that comes out of your transmitter. The main dangers are power problems that can cause the transmitter to be damaged if the antenna is not set correctly and interference with other signals by having an unstable and spurious transmitter. Spurious means that you are putting out more than one signal. The only way to check this is with an expensive piece of equipment called a service monitor or spectrum analyzer. This is a device that can measure anything about your signal from the stability or drift of the signal to what spurious signal your transmitter is putting out. You can buy filters that help to remove these unwanted signals, but you're better off buying a transmitter that produces a clean signal to start off with. Now, assuming you have a good quality transmitter, you will need a good quality antenna and RF cable. The antenna needs to be tuned to be resonant, which means that the antenna is perfectly tuned to the frequency of the transmitter signal. That way, all the power goes out the antenna and not back into the transmitter, which reduces your signal and can damage your transmitter. The cable, no matter how good, will lose signal along the way. A high quality cable will lose less and can be worth the expense to improve your power output. The connectors also make some difference, but the cable is where most power is lost. If you have a very powerful transmitter, you can compensate for the loss by turning up the power or increasing your antenna gain. The simplest way to increase your antenna gain is to add another antenna, but you have to be careful to make sure that the antennas are matched correctly and resonant. Another way to increase antenna gain is to have a bigger antenna or an antenna design that has built-in gain. For every 3 dBs of gain, you double your power. So if one antenna has 0 dBs of gain, two antennas should have 3 dBs of gain, which doubles your output power. For example, if you have a license for 100 watts and you have a 200 watt transmitter and your cable loses 3 dBs of power, you can turn the power up until the power coming out the end of the cable is 100 watts. That way you have overcome your losses. If on the other hand you have a 100 watt transmitter and along the cable you lose half your power down to 50 watts, you can use two antennas which has 3 dB gain to put your power back up to 100 watts. Even if you have the correct amount of power coming out of your antenna cable, if the antenna is not correctly tuned, you will lose that power. Subscribe if you'd like to see how to tune your antenna to be resonant. Before we move on, it is important to know that the height of the antenna matters more than anything else. No matter what power of signal you put out, the higher up the antenna, the better the signal by a long shot. Once you get up to about 100 meters or so in the air, the increase will make little difference, but from 1 meter up to 100 meters, every meter will make a significant difference. It is better to have a 1 watt transmitter at 20 meters high than a 20 watt transmitter at 1 meter. Even though the transmitter is 20 times the power, your signal range will be a fraction of a 20 meter signal at 1 watt. So, before you spend loads of money on all the equipment, make sure you can put your transmitter and antenna at a very high position. The higher the better within safety though, don't balance a 20 meter pole above a building or you'll be looking for trouble. Make sure it is solid and safe, but having your transmitter on a hill and your antenna on a high mast can turn a bad signal into an amazing one. 
Then let's move on to the modulation. This can vary between countries. Most countries allow 72 kHz modulation of the FM signal because the audio signal is modulated in frequency, i.e. FM or frequency modulation. The higher the audio level, the higher the frequency deviation. Once you go over 72 kHz or even 50 kHz in some countries, you are breaking the law. This can cause you to lose your license also, when you deviate or modulate your signal over the level set for your country, the person listening will hear distorted audio, as the radio receivers, especially high quality ones, are limited to demodulate the audio at 72 kHz or below. So if you go over that, your listener will hear a distorted signal. This is where a limiter helps to stop your audio from over deviating. It is better though to have a built-in audio limiter, like in this transmitter, Often, an external limiter will not catch all the signal peaks and you will occasionally over-deviate. The temptation is to turn up your audio to sound louder than other radio stations, but this just causes the FM signal to over-modulate. If you want a louder signal, the best is to use an audio processor like an Orban Optimod. This can make your audio louder and sound the way you want it to then the signal quality is extremely important because if you have a bad signal, you will lose listeners and your license. The signal must be completely stable and not have multiple signals as with a spurious signal. You should be putting out one FM signal only and it must be clean and stable. Checking this does require expensive equipment though, so be sure you are able to have your transmitter tested at a professional radio signal company. You can also have your antennas and cables tested at a radio signal company. Often two-way radio companies can help you with this because the equipment is pretty much the same. Whether it's for two-way radio communication or FM broadcast, the equipment is very similar.